My name is Matthew Nock, and I'm a professor of psychology at Harvard University. And here I have a research lab where we study why people do things that are harmful to themselves, focusing especially on suicide and self-injury. I personally became interested in this topic when I was actually an, an undergraduate student, and I was doing a semester abroad in London, and I was placed in a psychiatric hospital as my um, experiential rotation. And I was put in a unit where there were people who were extremely self-injurious and suicidal, and I was really perplexed about why people would, would intentionally harm themselves and try and end their lives. And this is something that I now know we've been perplexed about as humans for literally thousands of years. And it's confusing on many levels. It's confusing philosophically about you know, why would a person choose to end their life. It's confusing scientifically and goes against virtually all that we know about gene survival. Most of what we do as humans is, is geared towards trying to keep us alive. So why would some people change and try and end their life? And it's important from a societal perspective. Suicide is one of the leading causes of death around the world. More people die by suicide than all wars, all genocide, all interpersonal violence combined. So we're each more likely to die by our own hand than by someone else's. And it's, it's especially a big problem among young people. Suicide is the second leading cause of death among adolescents and young adults behind only accidents. And we really don't have a good understanding of why. And it's also a very human problem. So if you've been touched by suicide, you know it's something that uh, causes great uh, misery and, and, and devastation. And so we need to better understand it. And when I first learned about all this, I, I wondered, why isn't everyone studying this? Why isn't everyone trying to do more to try and prevent um, suicide and self-harm? And so in our research lab, we do just that. We conduct studies, large-scale epidemiological studies, where we go around the world and try and understand how big of a problem is this. We do lab-based studies, where we bring people into a behavioral laboratory and try and understand what kind of psychological factors might lead to suicidal or self-injurious behaviors. And then we take what we learn in the lab and literally bring it out into other settings, into hospitals, into schools, to see can we get better at identifying people at risk for suicide, understanding why they're suicidal and self-injurious, and then figuring out new ways to try and prevent these problems from happening before they occur uh, so we can try and help people at risk. Uh, for, for teachers and students and parents and, and loved ones out there, I think the most important quick thing to take from the work so far is if you think someone might be at risk for suicidal or self-injury, ask them. There's a, a big misconception that asking about suicidal self-injury is gonna lead someone to be suicidal. And we know from, from a great deal of research, that's just not true. It's actually one of the best ways to try and, and, and help people at risk is to, is to ask them, are you, uh, are, you, are you sad? Are you depressed? Are you thinking about suicide? And if so, take that person to, to get someone who can help them. Uh, probably the, the, the biggest uh, immediate take home. We're going to continue to keep doing this work, and I hope that, that people watching this might consider doing the same thing as well. So together, hopefully, we can help to uh, improve the human condition and, and, and improve human life. Mm -hmm.